And hello everyone, welcome back to the Panic Room here for the all new sports show on Facebook Live. I am Edward Green here in the Panic Room alone, McCall and Crime, West Bradshaw. We told you during the high school football game of the week this week, he was out on special assignment toppling South American governments left and right. And boy, did he ever do a great job of that. He's currently flying back over in an American helicarrier to come back and deliver you more high school football next week. But as for now, it is just me here in the panic phone, and we are doing a going to do a quick week seven high school football recap edition. Uh, the first week of Big East play has started. Most of these games got moved up to Thursday night because of the unfortunate uh, occurrence of Hurricane Matthew. And we do hope all of us here at the Only Sports Show do hope that you guys out there are staying safe and staying indoors while the flooding and the waters recede from our area. So, as I'm getting tech visual cues here from one name, field producer Jackie. Um, again, our deepest consolences go out to all of those out there who have suffered damage, even possibly lost their homes uh, in our area and across the eastern seaboard of the United States. But we are going to do a high school football recap today. Of course, our game of the week was Southern Nash hosting Fike, start of Big East Conference play, and it was a very tight game for about the first 18 minutes, and then Southern Nash blew it wide open. Final score, 49-14, to Firebirds over the Golden Demons. Of course, Southern Nash struck on the very first play from scrimmage, which you can see on our Facebook page. It was the Krispy Kreme hot play of the week, a double reverse a flea flicker pass that Matt Hampton hit Nadir Thompson on to open up the scoring. Though Fife answered right back, with a score of their own, just took two plays uh, for them to get to the one-yard line of Southern Nash. Next play, they managed to punch it in on a Kenny Johnson one-yard touchdown run. Fike would actually take a 14-7 lead in the second quarter after a couple of Southern Nash fumbles by our man Zonovan Bam Knight, uh, who was the running back du jour for Southern Nash this week. Zonovan, of course, is very, you know, got down on himself a little bit from those fumbles, but he came back in a huge way, ended the game with over 250 rushing yards and four touchdowns, and he was a big reason why Southern Nash was able to come back in this football game, and scoring 42 unanswered points on Fike to eventually finish with that 49-14 victory. Uh, Southern Nash's defense suffocating Fike all night outside of a few big plays, which one, the other one was a touchdown pass from their quarterback, Melton, uh, to get them at 14-7. That was really it. Um, Southern Nash, as we've seen for a lot of stretches this year, we saw it against Tarboro, also a very stifling defensive performance. This is a team, again, they still had penalties. They had a lot of miss, uh, mishandled snaps by both Matt Hampton and the quarterback Zimmerman, who came in later on in the uh, second half. We saw a lot of penalties again. We saw a couple fumbles from Zonovan uh, Knight, he later corrected those, of course. We also did see an interception from the Firebirds. There was a lot of stuff for this team to clean up, but I truly believe, and I said this on the broadcast as we were doing the game, this is an Eastern Finals talent team. If they can put it all together, they have four weeks left in this regular season to do it, they can absolutely make a run in the Eastern half of the 3A high school playoffs. And of course, they're also gonna be making a run at the uh, Big East conference title the last year that it will be in this current configuration granted they're only switching out one team but southern nash and rocky mountain look like they might be on a collision course for that title southern nash will be getting their chance to take down rocky mount uh, week four of conference play and that'll be october 27th and it'll be at southern nash this year that was a big game last year it's going to be another big game this year. We look to see how that's going to turn out. Of course, it's only a big game because the Rocky Mount Griffons survived a scare from the Nash Central Bulldogs. This is not your slightly older brother's Nash Central. No, sir. This is a very tough, very physical Nash Central team. They took an interception to the house to make it 14-7 in the first half. They were leading Rocky Mount, just like kind of Fike was doing to Southern Nash. Unlike Southern Nash, though, Rocky Mount only able to get one score up 2014 in the second half, and that was the final. 
So Rocky Mount, again, we, we saw this team maybe starting to crest up a little bit, and I don't take anything in the way for them having to go to Nash Central and get a hard-fought win there. Chris Lee has done amazing things with this Bulldogs team, and he looks to have them really on track. We, we've talked about it, Wes and I have. You know, what would be the, the result we get from Nash Central when they start conference play in the Big East, especially after, you know, we saw them end their non-conference play, which was so strong with that somewhat close loss uh, on the road to Bunn, a very good Bunn team. But this was a team that had gotten used to winning, was 4-1 and one going into that game, then they lost. How would they handle the Rocky Mount game? And it looks like they're on the right path. Um, so this, this is not a loss where Nash Central, I think, needs to hang their heads. They, they kept it late. But this will be the next kind of challenge for them going forward. They were able to beat Southwest Edgecombe. They are able to beat Bettingfield going away. Smithfield, Selma, North Johnson. They're winning the games now that they should win. They even had a come from behind victory against Southwest Edgecombe that we, of course, did earlier on in the season. The next step for Nash Central is that now that they're getting teams that are maybe ahead of them in the pecking order, they're closing that gap on them on the score sheet. The next step is to win games like that. That might not come till next year for Nash Central, but what we do know now is that there are definitely winnable games the rest of the way through conference play. They do have to go to Fike, which as we know, just got shellacked by Southern Nash. That could be a winnable game. At Northern, we'll get to them in a second. That is a winnable game. That is gonna be a very good game, but a winnable game for Nash Central. And then they host Hunt, which you'll see on our WHIG TV High School Football Game of the Week that October 28th on that Saturday. That is going to be a very good game. You know, we thought, you know, that is a game Hunt has handled Nash Central in in the past, you know, three or four years. And of course, back in the last year, Nash Central was in the playoffs. Hunt beat them in the playoffs in that very dramatic game uh, that went into overtime, where Nash Central actually had a lead in that game. But this is a much better Central team. There's at least three winnable games in this conference play left. Maybe Southern Nash is a bridge too far just yet for this uh, Nash Central team. They will get Southern Nash at home, uh, but that may be a bridge too far for them right now. But if they can pick up two, even three wins, uh, this looks like a definite playoff team, which is something that even last year you wouldn't have thought possible. Even coming into this year, you're thinking, maybe, maybe just get to 500. Well, right now they're four and three, but if they can get those three wins and finish off the season seven and four, they'll get to drop one of those conference losses, or non-conference losses, so they'll be seven and three. This Nash Central team, maybe, just maybe, is playoff bound. Now we did talk about Northern Nash and Hunt. Uh, the, the Randy Raper Bowl uh, is part four happening, and for the first time, Randy Raper with the victory, but it was very hard fought. Uh, we told you guys, don't take anything from that Southern Nash five score. Uh, this Big East is going to be a defensive slugfest throughout. Uh, Southern Nash and maybe Rocky Mountain, if they can really get going, will be able to put a lot of points on the board. Otherwise, you're going to see these very low-scoring, sub-20-point games. Uh, and that's exactly what Northern Nash did at Hunt on Thursday night. Northern Nash 6, Hunt 3. Hunt kicking a field goal in the second quarter, and it looked like it might be enough. A late fumble, though, on a punt uh, costs Hunt dearly as it set up Hunt, Northern Nash at the Hunt 15 to Carlo Royster. He's been our player of the game here. You've seen him on Facebook. Unfortunately for Hunt, to Carlo Royster would break off a 13-yard run to give Northern Nash a 6-3 lead. Extra point missed, but that's okay. For the Knights, they get a huge victory over Hunt. And as we said, Hunt might be the bottom team of the Big East this year, but it shows that they still have enough. They still have a very good defense. Points will be at a premium. Same with Northern Nash, though. They're going to have to find a way to start grinding out a few more points against some of the other teams. And they're going to have to turn it on fast because they're getting Southern Nash at home this next week. And that is going to be an incredibly tough game for them. However, for Northern, 5-2 and two now overall. That will get them to at least a 500 record uh, overall at the end of the season. That will get them playoff eligible. And if they can pick off you know, one of either maybe Nash Central or Fike the rest of the way, you think maybe that's another team that can get into the playoffs that we haven't seen in a few years. 
Uh, as for Hunt, right now sitting at three and four, they've been alternating wins and losses pretty much all season. Uh, still played up some close games, um, but but you just struggle, and we're going to see Hunt for the first time coming up on our high school game of the week this week as they take on Rocky Mount. Unfortunately for Hunt, it, it might be a bit of a lopsided affair, and that's something we're not used to with Hunt. Now, granted, they are going to get Rocky Mount at home. Rocky Mount coming off a tough Nash Central game. Maybe they catch them a little off. Maybe Rocky Mount doesn't take them as seriously as they should. I don't see that happening from a Jason Battle coach team anymore, but you never know. It is still high school. These are still kids playing, and, and we'll have to see if Hunt can maybe turn it around um, when they host Rocky Mount. That is going to be a very physical, very hard-fought game. Two enormously good defenses, especially with uh, what Rocky Mount breaks the table in Sherrod Green and Artavius Richardson. Uh, elsewhere in the Big East, uh, Fike will be taking on Nash Central this coming week. That will be at Fike. And as we mentioned, that might be a winnable game for the Bulldogs. If, if Fike can build any sort of an offense, and I, I think that they just they got a little bit exposed, unfortunately, against Southern Nash. Um, but this is still, I think, a good defense. This was not a normal game for the Fike Golden Demons. Uh, easily the most points they've given up at any point this season. Uh, the previous high was to Bunn, which you know Bunn is a very good team. They only gave up 24 there, and that was in a 24-20 loss. Um, so this is a fight team. They're going to need to keep it close against Nash Central, but if they can, they have a few playmakers. Kenny Johnson, a pretty good running back, and I think the defense is better than what we saw. I think Southern Nash just kind of opened the floodgates and just really imposed their will. I think Fike is better defensively than what they showed on Thursday night, but we'll have to see if maybe there's any sort of carryover when they take on Nash Central. As for the Bulldogs, big chance to get a first win in conference play this year. As for our Eastern Plains, two A teams, Bettingfield, uh, the Bruins get off on the right foot, uh, beating North Johnston uh, 21 0. And now Bettingfield sits at 4 and 3 overall. They've had some close games. You know, the, the two games they played against their Wilson County rivals, the two point loss to Fike, the one point win against Hunt. Uh, and and you, we saw that there might be pieces. We saw that, you know, we, the only time we've seen them with our own eyeballs this year, unfortunately, has been against Southern Nash. And that was a bit of a hard ask for them. Uh, but this is a betting field team that we know has some explosive playmakers. And if they can get it going and mitigate some of the turnovers, kind of like Southern Nash, really, uh, this is a team that can be very strong. And this is a very winnable uh, Eastern Plains Conference. Uh, the other two teams to pick up wins in the conference, Washington gets their first victory of the season as they beat Farmville Central 21-10. But more importantly for our area, Southwest Edgecombe uh, beats North Pitt 50-8. Again, that is 50-8. Uh, Southwest Edgecombe, after getting shut out at Tarboro before the non-conference-to-conference break, 20-0, they come back with easily their highest point total of the year, almost doubling it from when they beat Bertie for their first victory on the season. Uh, now they're going to go to Washington, which again is just coming off of their first one of the season. If Southwest can keep this rolling here, get a few guys healthy, have those sophomores be become uh, a little bit better, maybe they've grown up a little bit as the season has worn on, this could start to become a very dangerous Cougars team led by Jonathan Cobb. And right now, uh, it's... Bettingfield, Southwest, and Washington sitting atop that Eastern Plains at 1-0 each. And, of course, Bettingfield and Southwest excuse me, excuse me, do end the season against each other. That game will be at Bettingfield. That could be for the second or even first seed in the conference, which would be an automatic playoff berth for this conference. So both teams starting conference playoff in good shape. Maybe not the non-conference either wanted to have, especially Southwest. But they seem like they're starting to maybe turn around. And what is, I think we would say, a bit of a down Eastern Plains Conference this year. Uh, Farmville Central start off pretty well, but they've lost their third game of the season now against Washington. North Pitt has only won one game. Uh, North Johnston had gone 4-2 and two in non-conference. But again, they come into conference and just get smacked by Benning Field. Uh, their only other maybe really tough game this year was at Nash Central. Nash Central beat them down 43-15 as well in that game. So maybe maybe not too tough of a conference this year where maybe a betting field or Southwest can make a deep run and even win the Eastern Plains. We wrap up now with the two rivers uh, as far as our 11-man teams go. Tarboro uh, demolishes South Creek 42-0. 
complete performance from Tarboro this week. It looks like that offense is finally starting to kick it in gear. Also, this is a South Creek team that is 1-6 in six now on the season. Uh, but from Jeff Craddock, it sounds like he's much happier with the offensive performance. And it's the one thing, if you guys remember a few weeks ago when we talked to him after the Southwest Edgecombe win, that's something that he still wanted to see around in form. He said the defense was great. Special teams led by Dawson Harris. Phenomenal. But they need to get that offense going. And maybe, you know, this is something that we talk about, oh, you know, the Tarboro, you know, you go into conference play and maybe it's a little easier and, and it kind of relaxes you before going into the playoffs and you don't have that kind of tough competition to bulk you up. Well, maybe after going through that crucible, Northern, Southern, and Southwest Edgecombe, maybe, just maybe, for Tarboro, this year having the conference maybe not be as tough as possible as, you know, maybe the Big East can be, uh, although North Edgecombe might have something to say about that before it's all said and done. Maybe this year, getting them confidence, getting that offense starting to steamroll into the playoffs might be the confidence they need this year to, uh, to really get them going. And maybe having a somewhat easier conference road could be a benefit to this Tarboro team after taking some hits and shots in the non-conference. But again, this is a Tarboro team now 5-2 and two overall, 1-0 in the two rivers. And lastly, uh, North Edgecombe was supposed to play Rocky Mount Prep. Uh, that game did not get moved up to Thursday, so instead they're going to be playing on October 10th, which is Monday night uh, over there. So we're just going to have to... Sorry, there's, our, there's a ring going on. We didn't turn off all our devices. Sorry, folks. That's the panic room. Everybody's panicking. Um, as for North Edgecombe again, they will be taking on Rocky Mount Prep. Uh, we love you, Prep. We love you, Jaguars. We look to see that maybe North Edgecombe wins that game, though. If North Edgecombe does win that game like we expect them to, that would put them to 6-0 in, in uh, overall, 1-0 in conference play. And Tarboro, North Edgecombe. We've seen North Edgecombe get to Tarboro with a lot of confidence before and get absolutely beat down. North Edgecombe has size. They've been scoring points. Maybe this is the year they start to kind of close that gap on Tarboro a little bit. I would still favor Tarboro in that game. But we'll just have to see. And of course, sitting out there is still Riverside Martin. They had a tough win uh, against Northampton County, 30 to 28. And that is who North Edgecombe will be playing uh, coming up on Friday. So North Edgecombe is going to have to take on Rocky Mount Prep Monday, turn right around on Friday with just three days rest, and take on Riverside Martin, who a team that is six and one on the season. They're only lost to Bertie. Uh, coming up just before our conference play started here. So, you know, you, you don't know what to read into that. Riverside Martin with a two-point win over a team that uh, is three and three was 3-3 three and three coming into that game, but it started to blow out teams. Granted, those teams were Weldon, Southeast Halifax, Northwest Halifax. But this is, this is what the Two Rivers is sometimes, a lot of surprises. Uh, but for North Edgecombe, this will be a test for them having to uh, host Riverside Martin. If they can get past that, though, you would expect North Edgecombe to go into that Tarboro game undefeated, and they will be playing each other for the Two Rivers title. That game will be at Tarboro, though. But uh, that would be a fantastic atmosphere if North Edgecombe can make it. Uh, we're rounding up with our eight-man game right now. Uh, Rocky Mount Academy keeps on rolling. They beat Arundel Parrot Academy two weeks ago, 23-12, and then go on the road to St. David's on last Thursday and get a big 60-8 to victory. This is a Rocky Mount Academy team that has only given up 48 points this season uh, in their road to 7-0. Granted, two of those games were by forfeit, so no points could be scored on them. But still, you think then 48 points in five games. That's still very good. That's less than 10 points a game. And an eight-man football, that's very impressive. Uh, as for their scoring, though, 231 points. We'll say 230 because one of their games was 1-0 via the forfeit. So 230 points in five games. You know, you're talking, you know, just astronomical numbers right now for Rocky Mount Academy outscoring teams almost 5-1. to one. But for the Eagles, two of the next three weeks, they are going to be taking on Southampton Academy. Uh, this first time this Friday night in Rocky Mount, in two weeks, they're going to have to travel to Cortland, Virginia to take on Southampton. Uh, those will be two very, very big games on Rocky Mount Academy season in their bid to not just win a state title again in eight-man football, but also maybe to run through the schedule undefeated. 
but a Southampton Academy, who is also going to come into this game 7-0, also very dangerous. It is, that might be one of your games of the week uh, if you can make it out to uh, Rocky Mount Academy this Friday night at 7 o'clock. A lot of good games, though, as we continue here. Uh, as for the uh, Crystal Clear Pepsi Six Pack, uh, pretty much everybody picked the same games this week, except for uh, Clint Williams uh, not picking Southwest Edgecombe to win their game against uh, North Pitt. So that means Tony Dowdy, Wes Bradshaw, and myself all go 6-0 and this week. Clint goes 5-1 and as he falls a game back. Sorry, Deuce. Um, as for uh, the rest of the stuff, though, that is that is about going to do it here. Um, for the all-new sports show, uh, we are going to wrap up from the panic room here. Uh, again, we will be at uh, Hunt High School this Friday night for the high school football game of the week as the Rocky Mount Griffons and the Hunt Warriors clash in a great game, um, especially if that Hunt defense shows up again. That could be a points at a premium matchup. Also our first time seeing Rocky Mount and Hunt this season. Uh, so that'll do it. Uh, we hope to have Wes Bradshaw back here as he's on international duty uh, next Sunday night. Uh, but for one name, technical producer, field producer, Jackie, throw him up. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to what I'm sure you all really want to watch right now. And that is, of course, the biggest tournament going on in the world right now. That is... The uh, World's 2016 from the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium has overtaken the panic room here. But uh, I am Edward Green. Thank you so much for joining us here on the all-new Sports Show Panic Room phone. Uh, thank you so much for all our new likes this week. We're almost to 500. Thank you so much for all of you guys out there. To catch you guys again from the panic room, I'm Edward Green, signing off.